Confluence, the festival of India in Australia, is ongoing. And in fact, we brought uh, interviews with uh, several top performers who have come from India. One of those top performers who have come and performed here at uh, Riverside Theatre, Lennox Theatre, is uh, Shubhendra Rao, Saskia Rao, and uh, Zuheb. Uh, welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first to Shubhendra, um, of course, you, both of you, come from a very rich, uh, traditional music family. Uh, if I say that, am I right? You're absolutely right. My parents both are musicians. They have uh, given me the gift of music that they have uh, enriched my life through that. Mm. How about you, Saskia? Also, uh, many in my family, from grandparents and then uncles and aunts, all are into music. Many professional and most, all of them love music. Yes. Uh, Shubhendra, I think uh, uh, if you look at uh, sitar, mm -hmm. it's uh, a North Indian instrument, uh, mm -hmm. predominantly. Yes. Uh, how far, uh, how come somebody who is coming from South, and that too from my hometown, Mysore, got into sitar, and your father got into sitar? My father, uh, I think uh, he is a pioneer for introducing and popularizing sitar, especially in Karnataka and mostly in the South. Because as you said, in those days, way back in the late 1940s, there, were, there was not much uh, instrumental music down in the South. But for the first time he ever heard Pandit Ravi Shankar on radio, National All India Radio, those days national program, mm -hmm. and that changed his life. So he decided that he wanted to learn sitar. Uh, and I think it was all his efforts and he, my grandmother and my uncle, their efforts that they, today we are very proud to say that um, Karnataka has so much North Indian music, but I think the efforts all started with my father there. And uh, you were introduced to Pandit Ravi Shankar at the age of seven. Uh, how was it to go and meet uh, the great man and have a chat with him? Actually, I was introduced right from my birth. Oh, okay. But my first lesson was, in, well, official lesson was from the age of seven. Oh, okay. But uh, I was named after his son. His son's name was Shubhendra Shankar. More more so that every year Guruji would come to home, or come to our house in Bangalore oh. to visit my grandmother and have one meal always was in Bangalore in our house. So right from very early childhood, I mean, I used to play on his lap and that's how I've, I was introduced to him. But I think right from the beginning, he must have noticed uh, talent in music and encouraged me to pursue that. And officially, I started learning from him from the age of seven. Mm. And um, Saskia, I, I, it seems you fell in love with uh, Indian music and came to India. That's right, that's right. I was playing the cello already for many years and heard a bit of Indian music and just fell in love first with the music and then with the musician as well. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, the other big thing that you have done is to develop uh, a cello, which is uh, a very Indian cello. How, how did this idea come about? The idea grew with me as I discovered more of the music. I also felt that the instrument could change a bit with the music as well. Mm -hmm. um, I have added an extra playing string and the most unique feature of Indian instruments is often the resonating strings. Uh, so I've added 10 resonating strings to okay. it. So of course I haven't done that myself. Um, I've worked together with very talented instrument builders both in Holland as well as in India. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, you have uh, obviously, Shubhendra, uh, both of you have mm -hmm. performed all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, how was it to travel with uh, Pandit Ravi Shankar and your father, mm -hmm. uh, go around and uh, perform in all those uh, places? You know, part of our learning involves performing with your guru on stage. So, um, right from a very early age, say I was I think 18 when I started uh, performing with him but and that is assisting him on his in his concerts in his uh, various productions that way so I think when you are associated so closely with a genius with a person like him it just it's a great uh, step for you to take it forward and I think I was very very fortunate to have been with uh, him 
learning from him, traveling with him, performing with him, assisting him in various ways. And I think uh, I, I feel very blessed to be have, to have done that. And the cello is something which, uh, uh, of course, uh, we, we uh, I have uh, heard it, but not as many times as sitar. And how uh, have you been? Uh, you have been traveling in India, performing in starting from Bangalore, everywhere else in the world as well. How is cello taken by the Hindustani music, especially? I think I've been very blessed by the exposure I had to wonderful teachers um, who have guided me in the right way because that's always the most important thing and they have always encouraged me to to find my own playing style um, that suits the cello itself mm -hmm. so to find a voice for that instrument within the music and the responses have been really overwhelming and, and very encouraging. Mm. Uh, as I said, you have traveled all over the world, all the three of you, and coming to Australia as a part of this confluence, the Festival of India in Australia, uh, how has that uh, been so far for you, for the Australian audience and Australia itself? I think there is a beautiful warmth in the people here, and uh, we have been exposed to the best of what this country has to offer and I think this festival itself, Confluence, is a very unique festival bringing two countries, two cultures together in a way that uh, you know the people here can appreciate India, can appreciate the Indian culture, can appreciate everything good that India has to offer and for an extended period of three months so it can be, it, it can be a starting a point to so many different wonderful things that can happen between these two countries about you. I really, really, I think we all really enjoyed our time here in Australia. Mm -hmm. The welcoming um, people, the Confluence Festival, um, the collaborations we had with a uh, full Aboriginal women's choir, yes. who actually gave me yeah, this I necklace. So <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm wearing it with, with a lot of feeling and pride because yeah. these women made this and uh, it was a wonderful experience. So I think we've seen a lot of the best of this country as well. Right. And we would love to come back anytime. Yes. <laughs> we would love you to come back. <laughs>